Greetings, Paul Reed. <laughs> Greetings, my brother. How are you? You well? Really good, you know. Really good. Really good. Uh, you, I, I've asked everybody this um, when I've done an interview um, in during this period of quarantine here. What are you loving? What are you loathing uh, about being in the lockdown? Well, I feel like, you know, I don't know if you, if you remember Gulliver's Travels, right? <laughs> but it's this kind of, you know, where the giant gets pinned down. <laughs> I feel a bit pinned down um, in terms of wanting to kind of go out and do what I need to do. But I also feel that it's a good time to actually kind of get on top of a lot of stuff that I've needed to get on top of for a long time. So, you know, the traveling to and from work and all that, you know, I'm using that time. Also getting fitter, getting stronger, you know, just like consolidating and doing the things that I need to do. So, as I said, you're the founder, director, owner of Disrupt Space, which I'm going to let you describe it, but I've got it down as a black arts agency representing emerging UK artists. Is that, is that it in a nutshell? And, and uh -huh. can you embellish on it for me? We can embellish, but you've done a great job. You want to swap? <laughs> <laughs> I do your thing, you do mine, right? Yeah, no, it, it's essentially that, you know, it's supporting young emerging black contemporary artists coming up, you know, who might not necessarily have, you know, um, the kind of access that they need. Um, doing great work, don't have the exposure um, and, and need some support. So that's, that's the heart of it, is working with our artists, you know what I mean? Um, but it's also about challenging some of the kind of, you know, the existing structures and ideas that exist around art um, and the way in which we are often marginalized and outside of those big conversations. So we're, um, we're doing our own thing from our own kind of perspective. Um, and that's really about just us doing us. But I think the more successful that we are in what we're doing, it'll start to change, you know, practice in other spaces. What, what made you, I mean, obviously you just outlined what the business does and stuff like that, but what was it that really motivated you to say, you know what, I've had enough, I'm going to do this myself. And, and didn't, was it because you didn't see anything like what you're offering in that space already? Well, I've always been in relationships with artists and in my previous job, as you know, I was a director of the Black Cultural Archives. And so I was getting lots of people coming to me wanting access to gallery space. And I wasn't able to support um, because it was essentially an archive. So what we're, what we're doing now is really zoning in and targeting those artists and trying to kind of support them. And it was really about seeing, you know, the fact that there was an artist work, you know, workshop space, gallery spaces. And then even if there were, um, Oftentimes you'd find that the galleries or the people in positions of authority would be bringing their own kind of preconceived ideas and imposing those on the artist, as opposed to allowing the artist to breathe. And so what I was trying to do, I suppose, and, and building now is, you know, bringing that kind of collective energy together and, and really trying to promote them and getting them to do them and getting them to, you know, be the best artist that they can be um, you know, from their own perspective as we grow together. So what can we expect from you? What's, what's coming up? I know 2020 has oh. kind of put the brakes and everything for, any, for everybody. Um, but what kind of things do we, should we expect from Disrupt Space? Well, in the short term, we're actually engaging with people right now. So we've got a kind of a two-stage program that's just about, you know, just being launched. And that's really asking people to come and journey with us. And that, you know, you get to, intro you get to introduce our artists, we ask people to come along and get more, more creative and, you know, start painting and drawing and that kind of stuff. And then from there, we get into different kinds of webinars and seminars and just asking people to get more creative in this time. And by doing so, um, we're hoping that, you know, we get more artists out of that and we get more people interested in collecting. This is the thing I think that a lot of us have missed. You know, um, there's a huge amount of wealth out there in the world of the arts. But the, uh, the area of black arts in this country is hugely under-resourced and it's hugely under-realized. And so we've got to start collecting our own art. And by doing so, we're promoting our own artists and that there is our own image and it's our own voice. And that's what we need to be building. I know you've got a series as well coming up um, with some of these artists and, and associate, I guess, associate uh, directors or associates of yours, right? Yeah. Um, so talk, talk about some of those and what type of art that they produce? Well, all of the art, when we, when we do our exhibitions, the artists have the opportunity to really kind of showcase and we get to see what they've been doing. Um, and we've got, we're working with about 10 artists at the moment and they're all on our website. So people could go and have a look and see 
you know, and, and see the work that they're doing. They're all available um, to, to connect to and to uh, even to buy their work. Um, and so we're working on a number of things. One is this engagement piece, as I've mentioned, but as soon as the, um, this whole kind of lockdown period breaks, we then move into a whole program of exhibitions. Um, right. And so I'm really looking forward to that. And also working with some of the kind of mid-tier galleries. Um, and eventually at some point, we want to be opening up our own gallery. How, re how receptive have these mid-tier galleries been to embracing what you're offering? Very, because the thing is, is that if you're in this art world, you kind of know that art in Africa, in the Caribbean, um, in America, certain parts of Europe, it's a big thing, you know, African contemporary art is a big thing. And so we are now, you know, building this platform and representing black artists in this country. So we kind of cut through a lot of nonsense for them. Um, we will be able to see who's who. Um, and it's that kind of representing and management um, operating as an agency uh, with those artists. So we're hoping to kind of collaborate, end up doing some solo shows, you know, really giving some of our artists some really good exposure into areas where we would previously probably wouldn't have had. So that's what, that's what we're building on. All right, cool. Well, we're looking forward to profiling some of those, um, some of those artists prior to this, to the exhibitions, obviously when the lockdown lifts. Um, is there anything else you want to kind of share with, with voice viewers about, you know, disrupt space and what they should be looking out for in, in the future and, you know, what you're most proud of in terms of what could be coming? Because I, I, I don't want to talk for you. I know some of the things that are happening and okay. I'm excited. So I, well, I, I, I mean, want you to kind of... Everything's going to be coming through the web shop, website and also through the social media channels, right? So mm -hmm. um, the whole kind of disruptspace.org um, is, is, you know, people go to that, right? And, and go and check, out, check us out. But um, some of the artists, I mean, we're working with some of the more established artists in our community. So it's not always um, the emerging artists. So, you know, Alvin Kofi, for example, you know, um, all of those, all those brothers, Dref, you know, them brothers and sisters out there that have been on the circuit doing serious work. Um, Dref is amazing. I mean, obviously oh, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with his work. That's the only reason why I'm, I'm highlighting and singling him out. Yeah, but yeah. his street art is, is absolutely off the train. Next level, next level. So, you know, we, we often talk, when we talk about black emerging artists, um, we really are talking about those people that have been un, uncelebrated, you know, people that have been doing incredible work. Only a few of us break through and, and get to sell art, you know, at a, you know, a high, high ticket level. And most of us are just making a living. And so some of us have been doing the work on the ground for a long time and they're, and they're tremendous artists. I'm thinking about, you know, Terry Humphrey, for example, another one, you know, George Farrakhan Kelly. Um, you know, amazing artists, as well as the Sonia Boyces of this world, who have been around from the, the kind of early um, black arts movements in the kind of 80s and so on. So hugely uncelebrated. But then you've also got the ones that are coming up now, um, the ones that are doing digital art on laptops and tablets, you know, and thinking about Marlon Stewart, for example, and the ones that are doing incredible stuff around, you know, on acrylic, using acrylic and using oils. And some of the artists that we're working with at the moment, I mean, Please, just, I mean, it, I'd be doing a, a disjustice, a misjustice to be going down that list of artists. But there's some artists we're working with at the moment that are absolutely amazing. And when you get to see their work, it speaks for itself. You don't have to sell it. It speaks for itself. All right, Paul, thanks um, for your time. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who are going to be like checking out what you do, because as I've said to you privately, I don't know if there's too many people that operate in um the way that disrupt space are galvanizing um the art community from you know tell that tell our story mm. um so yeah well done on, on bringing the, the the concept to life and good luck with the future um do you want to outline again where people can find find sure. you so um the, the website address is disruptspace.org and the social media channels most of them are disrupt space hq um, the Instagram account is uh, official Disrupt Space and there's so much going on at the moment on, on our new YouTube channel. So that's just Disrupt Space. So around Disrupt Space, Disrupt Space HQ and official Disrupt Space, you get everything. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks very much.